Once again, this is not an issue I divide fellowship with. And if I was a pastor, I'd have some of my mid and post trib and pre raft friends preach for me. So I've never made it an issue or test the fellowship. And I love them and count some of them my best friends. And I'm going to do something different before I get in the lesson. I'm going to dedicate this message to, some, to the memory of my favorite of all post trippers, Sharon Ruth Little ex-girlfriend of mine. We broke up and for two and a half years I hoped we'd get back together, but we never did. And in fact, as of last September, I pretty well gave up on her. But I st we were still friends to the end. And I'll tell you what, her memory is blessed. Amen. Anyway, let's get right into 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Again, in verse 13, I want to get right into it. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Christ Jesus will God bring with him. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to pray. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Father, to touch me this morning. Anoint my lips of clay. Anoint those who are going to hear this message. Bless and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm dealing with reasons for pre the pre-trib rapture. Reasons for the pre-trib rapture. That's an issue many of us are divided over, but we shouldn't be. Amen. I'm staunch in my views on pre-trib, but I have friends who are staunch on mid, and once again, we're still friends. And I don't preach this to divide our friendship. I preach this, hey, if they all want to get up and do some lessons to, uh, disagreeing with me and want to send them to me, I'll listen. Amen. I'll stop there with that. But I want to deal with why the pre-trib. You know, in order to believe something, we should know why we believe it. Amen? You know, it's sad when people can say, I believe something with all my heart and can't even give you one or two scriptural defenses. But this morning, I'm going to give approximately nine, if I get the time to do it, on why the pre-trib. There's post-trib, pre-wrath, similar, but there's still a slight difference, and mid-trib. Uh, through my years of study, I'm pretty well sold on the pre-trib. And here's some of the reasons why. And I'm sure I'm not going to cover them all today. Even, even, and I could probably point out more. But this morning, I want to deal with these. First and foremost, to understand prophecy, there are certain books of the Bible you need to have knowledge of. Revelation is very important. You need to understand the prophecies of Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, also Luke 17, 26 to 31. And you also need a good knowledge of Daniel. And the first and the foremost reason I want to point out is the 70 weeks of Daniel. In Daniel 9, chap chapter 9, 24 to 27. I'm not going to read all of it for time's sake, but not verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy city to finish the transgressions, to make an end of sins, to, to make reconciliation for the iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Amen. There were 70 weeks a year dealing with here in Daniel 9, 24 to 27. And verse 27 is the main one I want to deal with. 
He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Understand, those 69 of those weeks have already been passed. They've got one more. There's a 62. We've got one more week of years left. What is that? And this is why I want to deal with. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice, the oblation, the seas. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate until the consummation and the determined shall be, shall he pour, be poured upon the desolate. There's that one last week a year's. It is not to the Gentiles. No, it is not to the church. It is to the Jewish people. Amen. Understand God's chosen physical people. I like to stress that. It's the Jews. Now, Christians, whether Jew, Gentile, black, white, red, yellow, sky blue, pink, we're the spiritual chosen people. But the Jews are God's chosen people. Risen up through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through that lineage. And God has blessed them. And it's through the Jews we have received the law. It's through the Jews we have many great men and women of God, such as King David, who I'm not going to deal with this morning, but I believe King David will be there in the millennial reign. Come on. But this morning, and there's other great men and women of God. I could mention Ruth, a great woman of God. Mary, the mother of Jesus, I believe was a great woman of God. Daniel, Ezekiel. But I'll tell you what, the greatest one was none of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came through that very lineage. Amen. And for 70 weeks, that's the final of the 70 weeks, the tribulation period. It's when the Lord, and I don't want to be careful how I use, say what I'm ready to say. It's when the Lord starts to put the emphasis on the Jewish nation. As we read in Romans 10, 9, 10, and 11, Paul talks about how we as Gentiles have been grafted in. You know, we didn't have, God didn't have to save us, but he chose us and grafted us in. We're part of the batch because God grafted us in. When we get saved, do you understand some of the early church heresies? Galatians and Acts 15 deal with it. There were people called the Judaizers, pardon me, but this is part of prophecy. You have to understand. They taught that the, Jew, the Gentile converts had to be circumcised and become Jews in order to be saved. I got news for you. It was Galatians tears that to pieces. Acts 15 tears that to pieces. What happens? We as Gentiles... We come through the blood of Jesus Christ by faith into this kingdom. Through salvation in Christ. We do not have to become Jews. And by the way, a Jew can still be saved. Though there's not been many saved amongst them, there's still some saved, such as that Baptist preacher of old, Hiram Appleman. I believe he was a good man from everything I've heard. A great man of God, a prayer warrior, they said. He was a Jew that got saved. Mordecai Ham was another great Jewish man that got saved. And by the way, if I got my stories correct, it was Mordecai Ham preaching the night Dr. Billy Graham got saved. Come on. So I'm not saying God does not deal with the Jews. But as a whole, it's been the Gentiles. And during the time of the tribulation. He is starting to deal with the Jews again. That's one reason why I believe he's going to take the church out. So he can now put the emphasis where it belongs. As it says in Romans chapter 11, 25, that's, that's actually point number two, why the pre-trib. As it says in Romans chapter 11, 25 to 29, 
I would not, brethren, that ye would be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness is in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles shall come. And so shall it, all Israel be saved. It's not that all Israel is going to be saved and since every Jew will ever be saved. No, but at the time of the second coming, I believe at the advent, he has come to save the Jewish nation. And I believe there will be Jews saved. In fact, I believe it will be the majority during the tribulation. I'm not going to say no Gentiles will be saved. Uh-uh, I don't want to say that. But I believe it's mainly going to be the Jews. Amen. So shall all Israel be saved. It is written, these shall come. How these shall come. I'll send the deliverer. And shall turn away ungodliness from the Jacob. This is the covenant unto them when I shall take every, away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are our, our enemies for you, your sakes. As touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes, for the gifts of calling to God are without repentance. You know what it's really saying? He's going to work on the Jews again. He's going to take the church out first. One more thing to understand, and this is just one more thing under this point. If you study Revelation, a lot of the Revelation deals with that area of the world. Now, I believe the tribulation is going to hit all the world. Some don't. I believe it is, Brother Paul. I believe the, the, the Antichrist will be a world leader to put every man under subjection. But one thing else I want to notice, you all to notice, the United States... It's not referred in prophecy. I don't believe it. The closest thing to prophecy on the United States is Psalm 9, 17. For the wicked shall be turned into hell and every nation that forgets God. <laughs> but during the tribulation period, there's two groups of men that are going to be risen up. They're going to raise up the 144,000 witnesses. Revelation 7, 3 and 4, say it hurt not the earth, nor neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed 140 and 40 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And I'll tell you why I believe they're sealed, why they're called up. Because God is going to use them to preach the everlasting gospel and to present the Lord Jesus Christ to the Jews. Amen. Also, one other group, and I believe they're going to be more likely, the Gentiles will more likely see them because thanks to the media this day and age. And I know Brother Paul and I disagree on who they are. Revelation 11. The two witnesses. Whether you believe it's Enoch or Moses, or Mo, I mean Enoch and Elijah, or Moses and Elijah, I'm not going to deal with, but I will tell you this. They will be sent to preach over in Israel. And yes, they will be presenting the gospel once again to the Jews. Once again, the emphasis is going to be on the Jews. The tribulation, actually the last three and a half years, is called the time of Jacob's trouble when the Antichrist raises up in the temple overseas, over in Israel, which I believe will be rebuilt, only to be destroyed at the end when Jesus comes and then he rebuilds his temple in righteousness. Amen. Those are, that's two of the main reasons why. The 70 weeks and the fact I believe this tribulation is for the Jews more than for the Gentiles. And I hope to get on it a little more. But now the next reason, and Brother Paul, if I've had a strong reason that has kept me pre-trib, regardless who has come along, I've always fallen back on this one. Really, it should be not Daniel 10, but this one has been a strong point for me. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 19, Write, which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. You know what that is? 
It is a natural outline for his writing in Revelation. Now, I understand when he first wrote it, there was not scripture verse chapter set up. But I believe God ordained that too to help us understand it better, the word of God. <clears throat> One of the things which thou hast seen, he is dealing with his experience on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation chapter 1. That's the first part of that outline. The things which thou hast seen. <clears throat> the things which are. And I know there's going to come a day the things which are are going to change a little bit. But right now the things that are is the church age. Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 deal with the church age. And how things are going to be during the church age. Yes, I believe that each age, and I wish I, I'm not going to deal with it strong here, just time's sake. But I believe each church represented a different period of church history. Amen. Ephesus represented the early church. Sad to say, it left its first love. Smyrna represented the persecuted church. And I'm not, and I'm not hey, we will suffer persecution, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. As Christians, uh, Pergamos, it's also uh, represents an age when the church starts to apostatize. Thyatira represents a church age. Amen. Boy, I forgot the next one. What is it? Amen. I know after it is Philadelphia, which was the perfected church age. Let me find it. Two, three. Sardis represents the church age. It represents the Reformation period. And if you look at some of the churches that came out, through, came up, rose up during the Reformation period, sad to say, many of them are in the very shape now that he described. Then there's the Philadelphian age. I believe that's when God rose up men like John Wesley, George Whitfield, Charles Finney, Charles Spurgeon even, uh, <clears throat> Peter Cartwright, the great camp meeting preacher here in America. I believe that's what made America great. You know that? You want to know how to make America great again? Repentance and revival. Amen. That will make America great and fast. If there would be more people repenting, fasting and praying for revival and getting a hold of God. I believe that will make America great. When sin is no longer tolerated. When sin is no longer celebrated. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then, the things which shall be hereafter. That's Revelation 4, 1 on. What does it say in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1? After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice I heard was, as it were, a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I'll show these things which must be hereafter. It's after the church age. And I believe Revelation 4.1 represents the rapture. When the rapture happens, the church age is gone. He that now left We'll let, amen, as it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm surprised I forgot to put that verse in my lesson, but it's when the church is gone, and I know most believe it, when the Holy Ghost is taken out with the church. Amen. Regardless, some believe it's strictly the Holy Ghost, some strictly the church. There's some people like me that believe that's both. So anyway, but regardless, when the restrainer is gone, that's whenever full force of hell will come. What's well, amazing, the first three and a half years will be considered a time of peace. But understand, the devil's out for false peace. It's also the unexpectedness or eminence of the rapture to me proves that the pre-trib. What do you mean? Matthew chapter 24, 42 Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. 
For verse 44. Therefore be also ready for such an hour as you think not. The Son of Man cometh. If you study those verses, you will see that Jesus is emphasizing how imminent it is. It could happen any time now. Now let me explain to you something. If it's mid-trib, pre-wrath, or post-trib, you can almost pinpoint it. Why? It's when the Antichrist sets up his covenant with Israel. And from there on, you could almost count the days. But this is very unexpected. Oh, yes, I'll say a little more. But, you know, we know the second coming of Christ is around the corner. I believe the pre-trib rapture is around the corner because of the signs. I'll say more about that at another point. The fact no man knows the day or the hour. Matthew chapter 24, 36. But that day and hour know if no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Mark chapter 13, 32. But that day and hour know if no man, no, not the angels, which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. You know what he's saying? He's saying no man knows the day or the hour. And when we hear people like Edgar Wise and that, who pinpointed the late Edgar Wise and that one point, the three or four days back in September, 1988, you know what I tell anybody? Reject him. When that guy, oh, what was his name? I can't even think of his name. I can see his face. And there was another guy about three years ago, about, no, about 10, 11 years ago, said he was coming a certain date. You know what? And I remember reading a post-tribber saying that the pre-trib rapture was a reason for date setting. I believe it should be the, really, it's the opposite. Let me tell you why. We don't know when he's coming. All we know is the signs. Amen. <laughs> so because we don't know the time, we know it's, let's see, the fact we don't know it's imminent, and we don't know the time, both separate points. And the third one, the next one that I want to deal with is the fact that God, that the Lord will come as a thief. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, for yourselves, Know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. <clears throat> you know, we may know that there's a thief in the area. Pick up the newspaper, listen to the radio, see the police go by a house. Boy, this week, there was one day in particular, I kept seeing policemen driving around with their lights on. I saw ambulances and fire trucks heading where at different places. I wonder what was going on. I know... I think it was Monday, they had that bomb thread over at the post office in Winchester. But regardless, even later in the week, I saw a lot of police activity. We can know that there's a thief on around. But Brother Paul, we don't know when the thief's going to hit our house. We don't know when he's going to hit our house. The same way it is with the coming of the Lord Jesus. We know from Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke chapter 17, 26 to 33, Luke chapter 21, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 5, 2 Peter chapter 3, and Revelation chapter 3, 14 through 22, which describes this day and age that we are now in Laodicea, the time when the church is apostate as a whole. There's false doctrine being tolerated. And not only that, but people don't have the zeal and the dedication they once had for the Lord. But this morning, when we look at those signs, we know the thief's around the corner. Jesus is coming. We just can't say when. Well, another thing, reason why, we are not appointed to wrath. Now, Brother Roy, doesn't the Bible say that they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall, not suffer, shall suffer persecution? Doesn't it not say in the world you shall have tribulation? But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Well, let me explain to you something. It says here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. 
by our Lord Jesus Christ. The tribulation, though there will be persecution to the tribulation saints. I've heard different schools of thought. I want to be careful how I say this. Whether a person, a Gentile has heard the gospel or not during this period could even be saved after the rapture. Well, I'm going to say it does clearly say the Lord shall send strong delusion. I believe many of our loved ones who we've prayed for, we've witnessed to and tried to reach when the rapture happens, I believe they'll be turned over to a delusive mind. I do not know all that the Antichrist is going to do. He could, uh, some believe that he could use the UFOs out there for the reason for the rapture that these people who call themselves evangelical Christians, I want to stress that. There are not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of God, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not in thy name cast out devils? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not in thy name done many wonders? Then I'll profess to them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So I want to stress the evangelical, the ones who are doctrinally sound, the ones, who we may disagree on a few issues, we still uphold this book, the Holy Bible. Amen. We still believe in the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. We still believe that there's only one way to heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ, hit God's only Son. Those who still believe, amen, that with the Lord, when He saves you, He saves you from something to something. What do you mean? He saves us out of life of sin. Come on. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Those, there won't be any homosexual Christians going into rapture. There will be people who are one time homosexuals, but got to the altar, maybe even had to have the mic spirits cast out of them in Jesus' name. Come on. Who got born again, and they can say with the church of Corinth, such were some of you. I believe Jesus can save and deliver a homosexual. I believe he can save and deliver an adulterer. I believe he can save and deliver a fornicator. I believe he can save and deliver a liar. I believe he can save and deliver a thief. He can save and deliver a good, moral, just person. I've learned this. Sometimes I'd almost sooner deal with the outright sinner. I would deal with that moral person. Yes, I'm going to be careful. I hope I'm wrong when I say that. But one place I heard a few years ago brought this up. They believe even if a Gentile is heard, God would get saved during the tribulation. Guess what they're going to have to do, Brother Paul? They're going to have to give their life. And I said, that is about the most sane thing I've heard with the people who believe in salvation for the Gentiles after the rapture. That if they do get saved, it ain't going to be a, a maybe martyr. You're going to be a martyr. And let me tell you, it's not going to be just a simple matter of running to a, a chopping block and say, cut my head off. They're not going to do that, Brother Paul. Amen. They're going to torment you. They're going to torture you. They're going to say all kinds of things to get you to break. They're going to do all kinds of things to try getting you to break. Then they'll be merciful and kill you. Come on. That's why it pays to be ready. Yes, there is persecution. Bitter persecution. Fox's Book of Martyrs dealt with it. And there's been other things that have come out. Over in Saudi Arabia... You get saved, more likely you're going to lose your head. In Iran, you're more likely going to be arrested, imprisoned, and later on be killed. I personally knew a man, Haik. I can't forget how to pronounce his name, last name, Hosefian. I met him years ago over at Hart's Chapel. I knew his sister, Anish Bullock. Amen. Lives in the United States, or last I knew. He was never a Muslim. I want you to know that. 
He was with the Orthodox Church over in Iran. If he had gotten saved a Muslim, he probably would have been martyred a lot faster. But because he was an Orthodox and got saved and followed evangelical Christianity, I think he was with the Assembly of God. They spared him there. But when he started reaching out to the Muslims over in Iran, guess what? They start to persecute him. And finally, when one man in particular, a Muslim who got saved and was a preacher, was arrested, and they'd done everything, he made sure he got that man set free. You know what the Iranians did to thank him for setting that, that Muslim who got converted to Christianity was preaching the gospel free? They followed him to the airport one morning. He vanished for, I think, 11 days or so. I forget how many days. A few days later, they found him in a Muslim graveyard and an unmarked grave. By the way, you want me to be honest with you? That him putting him in a Muslim graveyard would not have made him unready to meet God. It wouldn't matter. They could have threw him in a... They could have cremated his body and threw it in a sewer. He would have still been in heaven. It wouldn't have affected his salvation one bit. Amen. If the rapture had happened while he was in that Muslim graveyard, there would have been some Muslims there. That grave's empty! That grave's empty! It wasn't because a Muslim, because a Christian was there. Back to what I was ready to say. There's a difference between the wrath of God and the persecutions we face and the tribulations and the trials and the tests. They as a whole are satanic. As we read in Job chapter 1 and 2. God has to give the devil permission. But that's still not the wrath of God. God may allow it to chastise us. But that's still not the wrath of God. We are not appointed under wrath. But to obtain salvation. Amen. The tribulation is when God pours his wrath. Read chapter 6 through chapter 9 about the vials and the trumpets and the judgments that fall on the earth then. I believe it's going to be a horrible time. I believe, as we know, the vast majority, it was one time was that one third of the population is killed. Amen, you're right. You're right, it'll be similar to the plagues of Egypt, but worse. But then, what are you trying to say? God has not appointed his church for that. Once again, he's now calling his attention to the Jews in Israel. I'll say something else. Anytime you hear about a Jew who's satisfied living in America, one day, get up. And decide to go to the promised land. And that's one more prophecy being fulfilled. I remember the late Parker Cooper. Uh, Church of God man. A friend of mine for years. He was uh, the, through marriage. He was the nephew. The grand, great uncle of Perry Stone. A Church of God evangelist. He brought out how years ago. There was this, this Jewish man. Lived I think in New York. A businessman. Pro, prosperous. He said, I'll never go back to Israel. One year later, he was packing his bags and moved to Israel. Anytime you hear about that, because I believe God is going to move them all over there. He may have caused anti-Semitism to rise up to get them there. But they'll be there once again. And that's who he's going to deal with during the tribulation, primarily. Amen. Also, We're, huh? Amen. And another reason, in Luke 21, I'm running out of time, but I think I'm going to use the final two. Verse, chapter 21, verse 36. Watch therefore and pray always, they may be a callot worthy to escape the things <coughs> that shall come to pass. 
and to stand before the Son of Man. Okay. I'd like to hear how a poster, I'm sure they got their explanations, explains that. It's the easiest way to explain it is pray always. And I think we need to do more praying about this. That God will count us worthy. Amen. To escape what's coming. Amen. So that tells me that there is people going to escape the tribulation. It's those who are watching and praying. And this will be my final. I could do some more. I wish that I had brought out 2 Thessalonians. Because once again, I believe that's when the Antichrist is revealed. Is after the rapture. And I'm one who believes it won't take long after the rapture for him to be revealed. It won't be no six months or six weeks or six years. I believe he's going to be within a few hours, if not just a day or two at the most. But I believe that he's going to be revealed very soon after the rapture. Personally, I believe the Antichrist is alive now. I don't know who he is. Not that I'm curious, but in reality, I really don't want to know. Because I don't want to stay around. <laughs> but I believe he's alive. And do whatever he's supposed to do. And one last thing. The promise to the church of Philadelphia. Now, before I say this, I believe the Philadelphian church age is basically over. But understand, I believe there are Christians who are Philadelphian Christians in the Laodicean age. And yes, I believe it's possible there to be congregations of churches around the country and around the world. There may not be many, but there's still a Philadelphian type church. Amen. As the age, I believe it's gone, but it's still possible to be a Philadelphian Christian or Philadelphian church. What is the promise? Revelation 3.10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come on upon all the world to try them upon the earth. Them that dwell upon the earth. I believe he's going to remove the Philadelphian type Christians. Whether in this country, England, Saudi Arabia, China. You know what I believe? I think it's going to be funny when the rapture happens. All these Christians are being in forced labor. All of a sudden, I believe that's going to be where the most Christians are coming out. Places like China and Saudi Arabia. All of a sudden, they go to uh, make the Christians do their slave labor. And guess what? All those Christians are gone. Somebody could be ready to cut the head off a, a Christian over in Saudi Arabia. They're ready to swing the sword. And they swing it. And there's no head in fact, they're invisible because they were raptured. This morning, I'm going to close with this. What must I do to avoid the tribulation? First off, you need to follow Jesus. If your heart's not right with God this morning, now's the day to be saved. Repent of your sin and receive Jesus as your Savior. Amen. After that, you need to follow Jesus. You need to be ready, praying, seeking God ready. Because in an hour you think not, we do not know. If we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Jesus Christ. God's Son cleanses us from all sin. This morning, you've got to continue on with the Lord. As the Lord deals with you to put something aside, put it aside. If he deals with you, start seeking him for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Seek him for the baptism. This morning, we need to be ready at all times. God bless you.